marketing overall is growing. More people are doing marketing as part of their jobs. You know, LLMs are very good at generating content. They're also good at gathering and synthesizing sets of data and enabling, hopefully, end-to-end -end actions. You don't have to spend all your time on things you don't want, and you probably yeah. don't have to spend as much time in general, uh, <laughs> which is great. So Seema, marketing is a story as old as time. I was looking this up and I guess marketing dates back to like ancient ancient China with logos and ancient Greece and the town criers. So it's, it's kind of interesting that we use this term marketing and it's really just our ability to sell things or convince people of things. Where are we today in terms of like number of marketers, the supply and demand? I mean, for example, I consider myself as a podcaster, I'm a marketer. So how would you frame that up? The marketing overall is growing. More people are doing marketing as part of their jobs. Um, and I think, you know, there's well north of like $500 billion in the U.S. alone spent on marketing. And that number is growing. And, it, and it's all under the umbrella of how do you use tools to, again, reach customers? And you may do that in, with a various number of hats on. Yeah. And as we think about all the different jobs that are out there, you see all these charts where people are like, this industry is going to get hit really hard or is going to shift in this way. So you think about marketing in particular in this Gen AI wave. Why do you think that industry or jurisdiction is uniquely suited to maybe be shaped by this? Yes. Marketing almost felt like the most one of the most obvious use cases of Gen AI, Gen AI when it first came out. You're creating content. Mm -hmm. So whether you're using Jasper, Midjourney, any of these platforms, um, and then the natural sort of B to C to B to B evolution is, OK, we're creating an image. Now let's create an ad. Um, and so you know, LLMs, to that point, are very good at generating content. But they're also good at gathering and synthesizing sets of data um, and enabling, you know, hopefully end-to-end -end actions. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that mean for marketing in particular? One, you know, the most obvious is creating marketing content, whether that's emails and blog posts or ads. Um, and then there's another piece, which is enabling better research and the ability to collect and understand your customer. So mm -hmm. that is now being able to be done on a more dynamic and real-time basis versus you know sending a bunch of surveys out and then collecting the data later. Right. Um, and then the last thing I'll test I'll touch on is this aspect of hyper personalization. So going back to the marketing arc, right? The you know CRMs allowed you to really you know capture more and more data over mm -hmm. time um, in marketing automation around um, the customer that you're trying to reach. Now we can start creating way more content and really matching the content um, and to the individual. So instead of it being you know a message of like you know one to many. It's a many-to-many -many relationship, um, which is really exciting to see. Yeah, and as we think about that progression, so I'll say again, as putting my marketing hat on, because this is what I do every day, in one sense, I think it's true that every day I see a new tool and I'm like, oh my gosh, right, this, this is game-changing, I could use this. But in another sense, it feels like my job actually hasn't changed that much. And I think this is true for, for many marketers out there. So how do you see that progression in terms of like really reshaping these roles? Yeah, I think we're in still the early innings of using these tools across the B2B world. Um, and that's very much the case in marketing as well. The CMOs that we've talked to, we just had a dinner with a bunch of uh, CMOs across the area last week. They are super interested and want to be using AI-based tools, but mm -hmm. it's still in the sense of, you know, how, let me play with chat GPT to generate yep. blog posts or emails. Um, SEO is still probably the first area where you're seeing um, them start to experiment, but it's still not, you know, they're, it's still not where they're completely ready to trust and jump into formal software. The first shift we're going to see is the shift from being the doer. So I'm not writing the email, but I'm reviewing the email. So doer mm -hmm. to reviewer. And then I think in the next year or two, a lot more of this content is going to be generated on a more automated, fast basis. And the like measurement and collection of the, um, of the, the performance will all be collected and, and done on an automated basis. Um, and then software is going to start making end-to-end -end suggestions saying, and it's going to be observing how marketers say, yes, this piece, this copy makes sense, this doesn't. The same way, even if you're you know interacting with GPT-4.0, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's attuned to how, you know, staff or SEMA are what we want. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's going to change and we'll start to see more of what, you know, the term agent gets thrown around a lot, but this idea of like, uh, you know, sequential actions being strung yeah. together, I still think there'll be a human that's reviewing 
before you know a whole email campaign ends up getting sent out. But a lot more of the work leading up to that point will be automated. And if we think about the challenges, because we're not at the agent stage yet. Yes. So it does feel like even before that, people are maybe not fully adopting even the co-pilots. What would you say the reasoning behind that is? Like, why aren't these quite there yet in totally. some cases? It's partly the quality of like LM output, which I touched, touched on before. No one wants to run a brand campaign and they're, you know, there to be a hallucination yep. that would violate the trust that they have with their consumer or, or just their brand's image. Um, that's one piece. I think the second thing is, I think there's just a general feeling of how do I get comfortable with these tools? And yeah, again, something I've entrusted in humans, even if they're not always right, you know, I, I, it's still, you know, do I really feel like the, the, the software is able to um, keep up the same level of quality. And I think we're getting to that point where people are realizing, wait a second, if I can review and audit all the actions before they go out and it's faster and I can, I can get results, like maybe I can trust them more than um, the humans. Uh, and again, you, you can pull the team into more strategic decisions mm-hmm. versus needing to have them doing, you know, the more the more manual work or waiting for an agency to respond with you know three weeks later with a bunch of uh you know visual campaign it's like well the agency can be helping you on direction versus um versus the actual generation of the content how would you delineate the difference between a co-pilot and an agent in the case of marketing and also are people deploying these like have you seen these in practice yeah i think the Agent, so the co-pilot, right, is really supercharging the marketer. Yeah. The agent is starting to take on more of the end-to-end tasks, especially where we're seeing this the most is on the SMB side. And and why is that? So SMBs typically are spending a lot on marketing agencies because they don't have marketers internally, or they may have mm-hmm. one person at, at, at best. Um, they're often relying on freelancers. They're going to these freelancer marketplaces I mentioned earlier. And... Honest, and they're they're not optimizing their marketing at all. And so for them, something is often better than nothing. And they're willing to go try it. Um, and so I think that's actually some one of the areas that we're seeing probably the first iteration of agents. But I think um, as you get to more enterprise customers, like level of quality matters a lot more. Um, and so I think they're probably a little more hesitant. Um, and they've got you know organizationally, they have big big teams. They're relying on certain processes. It's it's all, change is always a little bit harder. So you're seeing a bunch of companies that are building in this space. I'd love for you to just share like what themes or categories are standing out because marketing is a pretty broad concept. I think there's a lot of really interesting themes. Both, you know, I think we often think about marketing as like just on the B2C side, but yeah. it's just as important on the B2B side and I think that intersection with sales is is a key trend. And so general areas we're looking at um I'll list a few. One is is hitting on this idea of research and gathering insights and data, using new forms um, of um, you know LLM powered voice, um, and so what I almost think of as like sort of the next gen of Medallia, um, and 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 being able to collect those insights, I think, is one area. Another is um, we talked about you know the location where you find your customers, opening up the you know, chat-based interfaces and co-pilots as an advertising platform. I think there's an ecosystem around that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about the SMB. I think I, I almost think of this as sort of the new, ver- it, the the next step to fiber up work, which is uh, how do you create, uh, replace, the, you know, create those freelancers and that you can kind of plug in for an SMB and, and create the automated agency for, um, for the SMB. I... Another area is around bridging marketing and sales. So how are you, um, how are you best creating leads and on a hyper hyper personalized basis? And then last thing, um, you know, goes back to this like copilot versus agent. Uh, there is going to be an automation layer that's built, and it's either going to plug into a bunch of individual tools, uh, mm-hmm. or perhaps one of the tool players will end up taking this on and and you know allowing the orchestration between. Uh, between tools uh, or cross tools, I should say. Um, but I think that's another area that's obvious. These are these. That's not the full list, but I think that's some of the areas we're seeing and we're very excited about. No, so many opportunities. I mean, you just mentioned like Fiverr and Upwork. If you've ever been to either of those uh, websites, there are drop downs where you can see all of the different professions or services that exist, and it's massive. Right. If people have ever scrolled it, it's just like you just keep scrolling. And so that's I think a great example of that alone is like so much room for technology to be involved there. And if you can imagine you're an SMB, you're like, uh, I just want to like run an ad campaign. Should I be picking <laughs> yeah. a designer? Should I write blog posts? Mm-hmm. Like how should I be spending my, you know, uh, my time? And 
you have no way to direct them. Or you can hire a really expensive marketing agency, which you probably don't have budget for. And sure. even then, you're like, I don't, I don't know. I just want to get my product in front of more people. Um, and I think that's like a problem that uh, I think I think AI can actually lead customers through the journey of like figuring out what the right product to pay for is, and then also yeah, finding the right expert, whether they're a, a human or or an agent below. So. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I mean, this is a big shift, and you know, as you said at the beginning, marketing does seem uniquely suited to like embrace this shift. Right. Um, so how should people be preparing for this if there are marketers out there or they have marketing teams? Um, what should they be doing? Look, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say try the tools. Um, I think I think these tools, especially in the near term, are very like creating huge uplifts in terms of like conversion and time for the for the marketers. Um, and I think the value is really accruing to the marketers, at least for now. So I, I know there's a little bit of aversion often where like, oh yeah, is my job going to get taken? But what we're seeing right now, if anything, is like, you don't have to spend all your time on things you don't want, and you probably yeah. don't have to spend as much time in general, uh, <laughs> which is great. Um, and so um, yeah, I think that's that's been really interesting. And I think the other thing is, I, I think people have been pleasantly surprised by how helpful these tools are versus mm-hmm. seeing them as like, oh, they just hallucinate and it's not useful. Um, so I, I, my, my, my general advice is just is trying the tools. Totally. I mean, as a marketer, there's so many times when we're like, oh, I wish I had this data. Oh, now you can have it, right? Or it's like, I wish I could create this creative. Oh, now right. you can. So it's really empowering. Um, Seema, this has been great. It's I, like you said, it's, it's a great thing that's coming for the industry. So excited to see what comes. I am too. 